Hello everyone and welcome to the Monster Hunter Wilds beta. So I want to go through today and take a look at essentially everything you can do in the beta and kind of give you a full rundown on what to look for. So starting off, you do have the character customization and my goodness, this might be one of the most in-depth character customization screens I have ever seen. So you have a whole bunch of different preset options, quite a few things to pick from. But if we just go down, let's see, we'll go back to number one here and then just show you some detail settings. You can go through and move the character as far away as you want and look at it from any angle. And then going on the hairstyles, as you can see, there's 40 plus different hairstyles, I think 45 in total. And if you want to mix and match different elements, let's say, for example, you want to go through and you like the specific body piece. Like, let's say you want to go through and pick a skin texture. You can choose a skin texture, wrinkles, for example, if you want to look old and you want your lower body to look, you know, more defined. And in shape, you could certainly do that. You could go through and choose things like facial hair with multiple different elements. Let's actually give this guy some... That's a scruffy looking beard. Maybe not. It's kind of rough. Let's go with a little bit more trim. Really off with that long hair, but yeah. There's quite a few options there. And then if you go into the face paint here, you can also go over and pick all the different colors for every single element that you actually have as well. For all of the different things coming from eyes to hair to beard to clothes, makeup, face paint, even undershirt. So if you want to go through and put an undershirt on, you can. And then if you go back here, you can see that you can actually randomize the face. You can pick the voice as well, the clothing that you want to wear. So if you're not sure, you can pick different elements. Like let's say you want to play the guy, but you want to basically have no clothes for some reason, because these would be the things typically you'd have on the girls. If that's how you want to rock, then you definitely could. Uh, we're going to go back to this custom setting here, though. You can actually go through and pick each different element as well for the clothes. Let's say you you know, for some reason you want to walk around with no pants on, but you want to, you know, a nice leather jacket, you could certainly do so. And of course, again, you can change all the colors for the color customization here. So there is quite a few different options. Now, once you do go through and get in the game, there are quite a few different menus to go through and talk about. And there's a lot of different information thrown at you all at once with not too much explanation. So we are going to be taking a look at that now. All right, now, right now, we're actually at the base camp, which you will get to experience after you do the initial story mission. Once you've completed that first story mission, then you actually have access to go through and free roam around the world, and you can go through and run around the hub. They actually announced that this hub here, so you can see all the different characters here. You can see the Palicos uh, down here, and then the other player names as well. So this is basically the new social hub, even though it's directly interactive with the map and literally you just walk out there and then you can fight the monsters, you will actually still see all the different hunters here. There's quite a lot going on with all their different names. It's very chaotic at times. Uh, there is an option to turn off the Palico names in these settings, so there's a lot less uh, information on the screen. And then you'll have access to the tent here as well. So let's go through and we'll talk about the tent real fast and then we'll hop into the menus and I'll show you some of the settings that I was just discussing. So going through in here again in the first, you can transfer items. This is actually very, very important. The moment you finish the story mission or as you're exploring, you will want to go through and take a look at the transfer items. You can see your ammo pouch if you're using weapons that require ammunition and then the item pouch. So essentially the item pouch is going to be everything that you have with you on your person when you're out exploring or on a hunt. And then these here are all the items you actually have in your storage, different items you would have acquired while playing. For example, though, you see some things that have 2,000 or 6,000 ammunition, 100 plus. A lot of these you would have actually just been given because you're in the beta. But as you do transfer over to the main game, eventually, like, you're not going to have, for example, 1,500 mega potions. That is simply just there because it is the beta. But this is essentially how you would come back and refill your inventory. So if you have an item on you, let's say you have this shock trap on you, which you can only carry one at a time. If you use that when you're out on a hunt to capture the creature or simply just to shock them so you can defeat them, when you come back here, you will automatically fill up your inventory with a similar item. So if you're running low on items, let's say you run out of potions and you're not sure what to do, you could run around looking for herbs to craft them, or you could simply just come back here to your tent, regardless of the location that you choose to go. It can be the main base here or any of the three outposts that you choose to have, and you'll automatically fill up on those items. Now, other items on here you may not necessarily need or may not want with you at all times. So if you go up and let's say you decide you don't want this bitter bug broth and you want to replace it with something else, let's say if you weren't carrying the bomb with you, for example, and you wanted to choose the large bombs over here, then you could go through and swap that out. You don't have too many options here in the beta, but it's important to understand how to actually do that. And then you can go through and register those items as well. Now, again, the ammo pouch just shows you all of the different ammo, uh, all the different ammunition that you have here which, again, it's all in the beta, so it's pretty much crafted and readily available for you. 
Now, the crafting list, I already mentioned this earlier. So, for example, if you run out of item when you're out on a hunt and you have no more potions, you can go through and look for items in the environment, like an herb, for example, to craft a potion. Now, what this actual little menu bar here is that you can see you can toggle on and off. So, if you go through and toggle this on and off, essentially that means when you pick up the requirement, so in this specific case, it shows you that you need one herb to craft one potion. When you pick up the herb in the environment, if it's turned off, that herb will just go into your inventory until you have so many. However, if you do that, you're now taking up an inventory slot for both an herb and for a potion. So if you turn on auto crafting, which it is by default, and other items are also on or off by default, as soon as you pick up that herb, let's say you're in the middle of a hunt, you run out of potions and you need a potion immediately, the moment you pick up that herb, it will automatically craft it for you and stick and mac in that potion slot, granting you another one to use during that battle. Whereas if you had the herb, you need to pause your game or open up your menu. It won't pause. You'll still be in a fight with the monster and you can take the time to craft it. So going through and ensuring you have all these things on that you want are definitely helpful. And by the game, like by default, I mentioned the game kind of does that for a lot of the important ones like the potions. And as you can see, there is a plethora of different options. So you can go through and select the ones that you want to use. And also you can go through and choose to use the ones that heal. I'll show you how to do that just a moment when we leave this inventory. Let's say you're kind of low to use a potion, but if you've lost some more health, by default, you know, you might use the mega potion as long as you have enough in your inventory to go through and do that. Now the checks items, I haven't really seen a use for this. You can't buy too much stuff. I mean, you can buy something, you can buy some things, but realistically, the game for the beta kind of just stocks you up with everything that you need. There are a few things you can buy from the shop if you want, but it's not like you're upgrading your gear or buying new enhancements. It's all kind of just to expose you to the elements. So realistically, if you get stuff from a hunt, you could probably just sell it. I don't think it's going to carry over, not that I know of. You do go through and get some gems, though, and those would be really valuable to use for upgrades if they were available. However, they're not available here in the beta. I've just been hoarding them because I don't know if they're going to carry over to the main game. I have a very strong feeling they will not. But just, just in case, I've kept them. You can also sell them. I don't think your gold or your money will carry over. If it did, that'd be great. But I think the only thing realistically carrying over, based on the information that we've been given, is the actual character you create. I don't think anything about that character will move. But... Correct me if I'm wrong, or if you've heard otherwise, please let me know down in the comments. But yeah, you'd see all those items in here. And then customize the radial menu. So I already mentioned this earlier. So for example, on the actions here, you can select the SOS flare, or what I was talking about earlier, the optimal health recovery. So if you use this, it will select the best type of potion to use to heal you based upon how injured you actually are. And some people are loving this and some people are hating this. I think it's great because it won't go through and use, let's say, a mega potion if you've only taken a small hit. It'll go through and use a standard potion to go through and keep your more vital one for when you're actually truly injured. And then the same thing for optimal status recovery. So if you were poisoned, for example, it would go through and most likely have an antidote available here that quickly allow you to use it versus having to go through and cipher through all items in your inventory. And then of course the whetstone sharpens and the SOS flare. But you can customize these as much as you want. This one's great too. It doesn't really tell you what to do with these. And by default, you'll see the action item here. But on here, you can actually see the whetstone for sharpening the capture net, which you can actually capture a bunch of different endemic life, bugs, and even fish using this net here in the beta. However, outside of the materials that they give you, they're not really doing anything for you research-wise for the simple fact that we don't have access to any of that information here in the beta. The binoculars are kind of, they're cool. You can look at monsters from afar and mark them, and I'll show you that in a little bit uh, where I'm actually out in the field. You can use the paint pods. And again, this is customizable. The ghillie mantle, so you make yourself invisible. You can use it and then sneak up on a creature and actually do a sneak attack, which is new to Monster Hunter Wilds. But they're also less likely to detect you if you're trying to do just run past them, for example. Or if you're trying to heal or sharpen, you can use a ghillie mantle. They'll go through and have a harder time locating you while you'll heal yourself up or use the actual um, whetstone to sharpen your blade. However, the fact that you can jump on your mountain and now do those things may not have as much versatility or may not feel like you need to use this as much as you would in previous games like Monster Hunter World. And then the portal barbecue, if you're going to go through and cook up some food. And then your fishing rod, which I've tried using the different lure of fishing rod, and I have struggled to catch anything. It was fairly easy and straightforward. It's actually really similar to Monster Hunter World. But uh, basically everything I couldn't catch, I just used the net, and I caught it in, with the net instead. And it was significantly faster to do that. So I think once we have more baits and lures as available options, depending upon the fish that you're looking for, fishing rod will definitely play a bigger role. 
Now coming on back here, that covers that. And then going over to the right, you could change your equipment. So I kind of showcased this in the previous video. You can change your weapon to the 14 different types, select your second weapon, pick your different armor set, which actually this is my favorite. So we'll swap over to that real fast. And when you are picking the armor, things to consider outside of just the physical appeal, if you're really trying to min-max your stats, is you can look at the skill info to see what skills they give you and see how many of that specific type of armor with that same skill set you need to have in order to acquire those skills. So what I mean by that is, like, let's say if we go up to Stamina Surge, you need to go through it. At level 1, if you have one of these, you'll get the plus 10%. If you have a second piece of gear that has it, you'll get plus 30% and three pieces plus 50%. So if you're really looking to min-max, you can go through and combine different pieces of gear to go through and get that. Now coming back here, you can go through and look at the Palicosetis. You can go through and have them either follow you or hang out at the camp. And you can also change their equipment to pick the ones that you like. So let's go through and throw this stuff on this guy. And he's looking pretty cool. And these, again, will also infect uh, his stats as well as the way he looks and behaves. For the most part, though, his skills will stay the same. And then you can cook a meal here at the camps. You can also go through and post or join quests. You can see these here. We can also talk to the handler for that in just a moment. And then you can change your overall appearance. So if you don't like how you customize your character and you want to change it here, you can go through and change certain elements of it here. Not every feature for character customization is actually available here through the tents. There are certain components that are not. So if you want to fully change your character, exit the game, go back to the main menu, and you can fully edit your character there. I believe that's going to be a beta-only feature because in previous games, they actually charged you different tickets or different events, certain amounts of money to actually be able to recustomize your character. So if you are playing the beta, spend some good amount of time customizing it to what you like. That way, when it does transfer over, you won't have to worry about it on day one. You can just go through and use that character already. And then you can make modifications you know, in the future for a ticket or money or whatever they do through here in the game. So we're going to finish editing here. And we're going to exit the actual tent and talk about some of the uh, more menu options. All right. Now, one other thing I actually forgot to mention was the quest here. I told you I'd go back through and talk about these. So the pose slash join quest. If you're playing single player and just playing by yourself, this doesn't matter as much. But if you want to go through and get help with a specific hunt or you want to do specific hunts that maybe just feel too difficult for you. And you want to watch other people engage with those hunts. Go into this menu here while you're in your tent. And you can see optional quests that you currently have available to you. But if you go over to lobby member quest, so of those 100 people that are here in your lobby, so if we exit out real quick, you can see that we actually have how many people are in this lobby. I think I've got to select the actual menu here. So you can see that we have 95 out of 100 people in this lobby. So there's quite a few people available to actually pick from. Only 16 there in that actual little zone. But if you go back to the actual post quest of those 100 people, these are all of the different quests that they have available right now that they've posted for. So if let's say you wanted to do a Ray Dao investigation, a Ray Du investigation, um, and you just have been struggling with it and you want to join someone else to actually do that hunt, it will tell you that there's no passcode on this on the right hand side, how big their current party is. So one of four, basically it auto accepts. So basically if you join, you can immediately join. You don't need an invitation. You could just join right away. How long ago they started this? So 13 minutes ago. So if there's a timer on your hunt, you'll know how much time has elapsed and how much time you have left. And basically the conditions of not fainting three or more times. So if you want to join other people's hunts and you don't have any friends on here, you just want to make new friends and experiment, this is definitely the best way to go through and do that because you can see specifically what type of hunt it is, what tiers. You can see this hunt here and this hunt here. Both have two stars. You can see this is an alpha version though. Instead of having the four above, it's got the three stars here. It's a two rank, but a three star. And all these, the purple stars above indicate the actual difficulty. So this level one is going to be the easiest hunt. And these level fives will be the most challenging hunts. So you'll definitely know what to look out for. And this is basically your actual rank. You don't really do much with the ranks. Uh, you can't really see too much information about it here in the beta, but it'll be crucial once you actually start the game to actually work on leveling up your Monster Hunter rank because that will really impact basically everything you do throughout the rest of the game and the actual power that you have in comparison to these actual monsters. All right, now let's take a look at some of the more menu options that you have. So if you go through, open up your menu. We already talked about the crafting list, your item pouch. We've already talked about all of these. There's the coding patch here, which you can apply to some of your weapons. The field patch, which we don't actually have yet. We've talked about the radio menu and the equipment info there as well. The quest results is grayed out for the sake of the beta. Let's talk about the map. Now, this map is huge. It's very similar in a lot of senses to giving you the information that Monster Hunter World did. However, there's way more information 
on this map. And as you can see, you can actually look at it from an angle now. So you can actually go through and see different routes at different levels. So if we want to go down, for example, we could see that if you want to go to this area here, if we spin it around, you can see how it drops down. And there you can see it right here from level five, you'll need to take that ramp down to further get to level four and down to here. So this is actually an elevated area and you'd be going down. So the map is huge because you can go through and see stuff like this and figure it out. Whereas in previous games, it's really easy to get lost when you're looking for caverns, for example, like number 15 or these lower level sections. It was really hard to find those if you weren't familiar with the map and understanding where to navigate to. So with this, it's very easy to see where it is that you need to go. You can go through and just follow the map and spin it and look for the actual path on the map and figure out the best place to get there. You can also go through and see the active monsters. For example, you can see the Chattacabra here is going through and walking down this path here. So it's easy to track. You can see the, another monster up here. And then if we go back down, you can see that there was actually the Alpha Doshogama. And then you can see there's a whole other path without an Alpha over here as well. You can also see the different zones. So as we get the full game, you'll know that there are certain monsters that will typically show up in specific zones. For example, I don't know. I don't see Ray Dow. He is not on the map currently. But you would know that typically, you know, he would be in area 13. And you can also go through and see their pathing. So you can see that this specific group is going to be pathing towards where this X is located. So if you plan to go through and hunt them, or you can see this one's pathing down, you can try to intercept them on the way. So I wanted to teleport over to this base camp, for example. I could probably go through and interact with this guy as he makes his way down, saving some much of time from having to go all the way around. Now, if you are looking for specific items, again, in the beta, it's not really as important because the game provides you with pretty much everything that you need. But if you are out on the hunt and you are looking for to refill things without returning to camp, which, again, returning to camp takes you a moment and it gives you everything you need currently in the beta. But if you want to hang out, you can go through and look for bugs. You can look for brushes to hide in from the monsters, different types of pods, um, ores, for example. You can pretty much stock up on everything. You can also see all these little purple dots will be the small monsters. So this is actually, I believe, one of the, uh, yeah, this, I think this might be the alligator. I believe that's what that was with the alligator creature. Uh, you can see more up and down the river. You can see some of the other herbivores here, or you can get honey. So honey is important because if you have potions and you find the basic green herbs, these here, you can combine them with the honey, which will give you mega potions, which again, the game gives you like 1500. So you probably don't need to, but it's just good information to have if you plan to stick around or play further, or if you need it when you're out exploring and you don't have a chance to return to camp. So the map is huge. Oh, there's Ray Dow. You can see Ray Dow coming down now. So it, it is really, really important you use this, and it's very easy. Just a click of a button, you can quickly glance at it. And then also, another thing I forgot to mention on the map. Let's see if we can open it one more time. So in the top left corner of the map, you can see that it says it's nighttime, and it's the sand tide, and you can zoom in and out as well. But it'll tell you basically what type of day it is and which of the three seasons is currently happening, which is how you'll know when to look for creatures like Ray Down because they only come out at certain moments, usually when there's a sandstorm, for example. And if you want to mark a location, if, if you want to teleport, you could simply just fast travel from anywhere. You don't need to be at a camp to teleport. You could be in the middle of anywhere you want, go to your map, just press X, and you will immediately fast travel. You don't need to be in camp. You could be in the middle of a hunt. I believe, I haven't tried it with a monster being aggroed to me, but I have done it basically, if I chose not to fight, I'm just out wandering around, you can go through and do that. So now it'll actually tell you when you get close to them. And if we choose to want to focus on them, we can just press the R3 button and it'll automatically lock onto them for us. There we go. And now what that will do is if we go through and we, it'll immediately send scout flies towards it. So if we're to go do something else, but we want to keep track of where it's going to be located, that's going to make that our main priority. And then if you look at the map here as well, you can actually go through and see that specific creature has been marked with this little spyglass. So I know where they're going to be at all times. And I can go through and just follow them if I want to engage with them. Or if I get distracted, I'm doing something else and I'm going to come back. I can definitely do that. Now let's go through and get back to safety. Come on, bud. Follow me. If we have the scout flies and I let him go, he will automatically follow. He'll just do what he's supposed to and he will head on his way. So as you can see, he's going to start heading towards that hunt. If you want to stop immediately on your mount, just hold the R2 button. And once you hold the R2 button, you can go through and take a moment to take scenery in, figure out where you want to go, and you can slowly move towards them at your own pace. And it won't be as wild jumping around. So you can definitely go through and minimize all the frantic, oh, wow, he is going to destroy that little camp. 
What on earth? Okay. Well, let's see. I think he was semi-aggroed. He was pretty mad, too. So let's see. We're going to stop this. Stop our guy. So I don't want him to run out and get attacked while I'm in the map. That would definitely be bad. And see if we can just teleport over here. And we can. So definitely a quick way to go through and navigate. And for example, you would notice that he was still marked on that target. Even though I ran to safety, he was going to turn around and put me back in a battle while I was in my menu, which is obviously not an ideal circumstance. And now if we go through and take a look at the menu here, let's see what we have left. Communication. So this would be, you can go through and take a look at everybody who's in your actual lobby. So if you want to see everybody who's in the lobby, you can do that. You can go through and say specific things to everyone within the lobby. When you're on a certain monster, you can set up these specific things that will go through and give certain text based on the actual actions you perform. You can go through and send little gifts or memes. And you could have different poses as well. Oh, here we go. So you can see the whole list of players here. And if you, let's say, for example, if I didn't like this OG guy, you could click on him and you can send him specific information. And if you also wanted to block them, for example, because you, they were just being annoying or you didn't want to hear them, for example, you could also do that all through this specific menu here. And then you can see if your friends, it breaks it down. There's quite a few things who you're following, followers, your ignore list. So if you put somebody on the ignore list, you can see that in the future. And then if we go back to the menu here, the chat logs, so if you have conversations with people or, you know, as there's certain actions performed within the actual world itself, the player list, the voice chat, invite a friend, notification list, and idle message. Going over here, you could get more of the same thing we've already covered, return to the title screen, options, tip list. So the tip list is actually really, really important. So if you go in here, it'll show you different things on how to perform certain actions. So let's say you wanted to try out the lance and you weren't sure. I'll tell you a little bit about it here. But even more so, if you go to the tutorial list, you'll get even more information if you just simply don't know. Like, let's say you wanted to go through and you wanted to cook, but you didn't know how. It'll tell you how to go through and to cook so you can do that here in the future. And I highly encourage you cooking if you don't already. It'll definitely give you some huge buffs uh, that you would not typically have available to you, whether that be increasing your damage, stamina recovery, so on and so forth. And now the last thing here is you can see the options, pause game, configuration, photo mode, which is sadly disabled. I'm really looking forward to the photo mode, and I hope they give you an option to disable the HUD during that uh, once they do get this game fully complete. Because I'm sure once it does have all the finishing touches on it, it'll definitely be a very nice looking game. Now, if we go through and take a look at the options here, there's a plethora of different things you can change. You can actually change the HUD size depending upon where you're going, or if you want to see decimal damage, if you want to min max, you want to see every single component of damage. You could do that. You could change all of the different things on here and how they appear for you. Button configuration, directional controls, camera speed, if you want to move faster or slower, 120 hertz, the HDR output, motion blur off or on, certain volume components, uh, the Palico language on the bottom here, quest members, and then the color blindness. And there's lots of different like accessibility, like a lot of accessibility options. Whether that be the color blindness, the visual, the motion blur, auditory, there's quite a few options, so which, which is great. So that's pretty much everything for the menu here. So hopefully that at least helps explain and breaks down the menu so it's not as convoluted as it actually seems. Uh, at first, it's definitely overwhelming, but once you have a, like a good feeling for it, understand where to go and what to look for, you know, that, that, that should help you understand, hopefully, you know, what to do or why certain things are happening. Or what happens when you pick up an item, for example, like if we walk over to this herb, like I mentioned earlier, if you look at the item, you can just tell it's an herb. So when you pick it up, you can see immediately on the right-hand side that it crafted a potion, which is what I was explaining earlier. So hopefully some of that now makes more sense. You're not just seeing text pop up and not understanding why certain elements are actually happening. All right, well, guys, if you did enjoy today's video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're not already.